How was season 16 serving? Oh, she's gonna rise again. <laughs> what? Ah! Uh! Very that. Hello, I am Joey Nolfi with Entertainment Weekly, just shooting the breeze with the cast of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16, and blowing in over the Tuckahoe Hills is my next guest, a gust of fabulous energy, and I, I mean, look at the material, like, come on. She's about to be the wind beneath your wings. Please welcome the gorgeous Nymphia Wind. How are you? Hello, I'm doing great. I'm I, very excited. Yeah, uh, I'm very excited to be talking with you, especially with your little she banana friend banana. with us. What's, hey, what's their name? She's called bananas. Just bananas, okay. With yes. I love little bananas. We need to get her on season 17. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, do I have to say, doing my research on you, uh, you have one of the most distinct and stunning approaches to this art form I think I've seen in a while, and I'm very excited to talk to you about it all, and I want to set the stage for everyone a little bit by talking about your origins, because um, you were based in Taiwan for many years, right? Yes. That's where you got your drag, your start in drag? Pretty much, because I went to college in England, and I, I fully started drag in in Taiwan after serving the army. And I was like, started performing there and doing all the drag stuff. And that's where I basically started my career. Wait, you served in the army? Yeah, it's mandatory as a Taiwanese citizen to serve the army. Oh, wow. Because we're so close to a certain country. Wow, what was that, what was that experience like for you? Um, it was interesting because uh, my mom actually helped me apply a substitute service. Uh -huh. So I went to the fire department mm -hmm. instead of the actual army. So I actually served six months in the fire brigade. I was in a little island off coast of the mainland Taiwan Islands. So there was basically not gonna be any fires happening. So I was basically sat all day in the office, washing cars and just doing nothing. <laughs> just like sat all day in the office Yeah, I was just cars. like sitting there, like playing my Game Boy. Well, that's, that's your service, hard at work, there you go. Very hard at work, serving face. <laughs> <laughs> did you, um, wait, in your um, military service, did you ever cross paths with Alexis Mateo's um, supposed military boyfriend from season three? <laughs> I think I might have caught a little, little glimpse, just the legs, like somewhere walking by. <laughs> so we can confirm his existence, finally, Nymphia says it. <laughs> he exists. <laughs> now, you are based in New York City now, correct? Uh, yes. Okay, so um, when did you relocate to New York and why did you relocate there? Um, so I actually never really lived in America for over like a year mm -hmm. prior to last year because I moved, in, moved to New York from Taiwan in the August of 2022. Okay, also recently. Yeah, so it's quite like fresh off the boat, like in America and then apply for Drag Race and then here I am. You're just like, of course. I, just, <laughs> I moved here, applied for Drag Race. It's, I mean, come on again, look at the material. Of course she did. There is a lot of New York gals on this season. Yes, so I know. I mean like, I think six? Five or six? Um, I think technically five, because okay. one of them is kind of an LA girl, but like she's now relocated to oh, okay. New York. Okay. Well, regardless, there's a lot. There's yeah, a lot of New York, a lot. New York girls. Um, so were you close with any of them before? Did you know any of them beforehand? Um, I think I met them. I met Megami, Dawn, and Tsunami, mm -hmm. but like I've never really like hung out with them. I just met them out, mm -hmm. like going out in New York City. Do you want to continue knowing them after being on Drag Race with them? <laughs> To be determined. <laughs> we'll find out. No, your artistry again, like I said, I feel like every photo I saw, my mouth just got lower and lower to the ground. I was just like, oh really? my God, you go from these, this pop girl looks to I even saw you as like a bull with horns um, and then like a ring in your nose to these immaculate works inspired by Asian culture, as you've said in an interview before. So I'm wondering why that balance with all of these other looks is so important for you to this through line of Asian culture in your drag. I feel like as an Asian drag queen, I really need to represent my own traditions and culture and really fuse that with my drag. Because to me, like drag is kind of a Western thing to me. It's like you do it more here, so it's more developed. But back in Asia, at least in Taiwan, it's still a new form yeah. of like expression. So I feel like it's important to really stand out by combining my own culture with my drag to create this fusion of the past and the future, mm -hmm. like with drag and traditional stuff. Mm -hmm. So what, when you start conceiving of a look, what, where do you start and then does it follow like a certain 
progression or is it just like whatever comes to you with those inspirations? If I have a theme, I would try to design a concept around that theme. And if it's a particular face paint, I would draw inspiration from that and kind of like combine it onto my face with my drag and kind of see where it goes. Mm -hmm. So it's like half and half where it's kind of planned and inspired by something. And then the other half, it kind of just take me wherever you want to take me kind of thing. Like, let's see where it goes. Yeah. <laughs> and it, I meant because bringing a lot of cultural influence in there, mm -hmm. there's I mentioned it's a lot of just that's not just something that you can just like pull out of nowhere. Like there's a lot of research yeah. that goes into that, right? A lot of research to mm -hmm. really find the right kind of thing you want to do mm -hmm. and then like where that tradition is based on and how it can be turned into a new meaning. What's the like longest you've ever spent conceptualizing and researching for a look? Maybe a day or two, because mm -hmm. it doesn't really take that long. It's just like, just find the research and kind of base it off of that. Actually, I take that back. Sometimes <laughs> it does take a week for me to like, think back and forth, because like sometimes I'm like, oh, should I do this? But then I'm like, oh, I'll change my mind tomorrow. And I'm like, is this good enough? And I'm like, oh, does this work? I'm like, Ugh. But like if I'm on a time crunch and like I have a delay, I'm like, get it together and just do something. And I'm always like asking my friend, is this good enough? Like, is this good? Like, and they're like, it's fine. You're think overthinking. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> but, um, yeah, it somehow has like managed to put itself together at the end. <laughs> I mean, clearly the answer is always yes. It's always working. Yes. With you, always. <laughs> You also said in a 2019 interview that your drag is inspired by sex and plastic. To, and to quote you, you said, dolls, toys, dominatrixes, but also Barbies, dolls, robots. Really? Why did I say that? And death, too. This was four years ago. And death as well. And that you have a bit of a morbid streak. So uh, what draws you to dominatrixes and death? <laughs> Despite my very joyful look, with my drag, I'm actually quite dead inside. Oh no. And I really like the idea of death and dying in my performance as a concept, because I feel like that's kind of a sense of, you know, rebirth, because you're kind of like cutting off the dead weight and then the process of dying. Just dying just... for us right now. <laughs> Re rebirth. <laughs> like getting rebirth from the ashes, something like that. This is just like, there's something beautiful in death for me. So I like to explore death with my drag and yeah. then like putting that in a performance. And dominatrix and sex dolls is um, just being really fierce and just having men at your feet. That is just like, I mean, I, I love it. I love it. What is the most morbid thing or performance you've ever done? I do really like in my performance kind of go to a, like a down, and then bring it back and up. up. Okay. So it's like, to me, the beauty in a performance is how you get back up from how you put yourself to that low. Got it. Does that yeah. make sense? It does. Like kind of like sabotage yourself, like kill yourself and then die. And then like how you crawl back up. <laughs> If only it worked like that in real life, true. <laughs> you know, just showing struggles on the stage yes. and maybe someone will relate to that and hopefully feel inspired to finally pull themselves out of a deep, 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 deep hole. Very deep hole. Uh, <laughs> you also once did a performance um, as a sex robot that got kind of violent with your backup dancers? You really did all the research. Yes, so um, what happened there? Yes, I did. Um, I do also like a bit of violence in my performances. <laughs> it's just like death, violence, and brutality. Yeah, what happened with that performance? So I just had the idea of being a passive sex robot and being, you know, ordered around. And how do you get yourself out of that kind of situation when you're, you know, being controlled? So that was the basic premise of the performance. And, you know, you'll have to see the performance to find out what happens. <laughs> what was the reaction to that from the audience? Um, I think a lot of the reaction to my performance is quite surprising and unexpected because I do serve like the pop stuntalina mm -hmm. kind of performance as mm -hmm. well. So like when you come to my shows, you don't know what you're going to get. Sometimes you go to my show and it's, oh, she's giving basic drag performances, just like pop song, 
But then sometimes you go to her shows and it's like concept and you see someone dying on stage and like she's being brutalized and she's struggling and then somehow she kind of managed to survive that. So it's like, you know, I like that element of surprise and then doing the unexpected, I guess. Yes, yes. <laughs> You know, thinking about how you're going to fit into all of the format of Drag Race is like very interesting to me because... It's very interesting to me too. <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah, because this is... You're talking about some very like heavy things mm -hmm. with your art. It's very conceptual. It's not a lot of the stuff that you see happening on Drag Race. So like the thing that comes to my mind is maybe like Willow Pill with the spaghetti bathtub thing is like a kind of very conceptual... Yeah. Thing, experimental things. So did you maybe find it difficult at first to marry, because I know you do the other things well, like the pop girl stuff very yeah. well, but did you find it difficult to marry the other side of you with um, what Drag Race expects? I mean, coming into this competition, I do know I am kind of like a different kind, not your typical drag queen, because I do incorporate a lot of different concepts into my drag. So like, I was worried at first, you know, how I fit in, but there's also another side of Nymphia where she's more upbeat and fun and kind of camp and, you know, silly and goofy. So I do see that kind of going well with the competition mm -hmm. style. But um, there's also another side where I want to incorporate more and show myself in a more conceptual way. So I did have to like find areas where I could slightly kind of incorporate that. I don't know if I can say like the talent show. I didn't say anything. Um, so, you know, I had to like find ways to put my conceptual side in the competition, but not as death, dying and brutality, but like okay. in the middle of that and being commercial. Yeah. So it's like in the middle. So what's so like when you're approaching a, like a lip sync to like a pop song, like let's say or if you have to lip sync on the show and it's like an Ariana Grande song or something. How are you approaching those kinds of songs? I mean, just, you know, feel the fantasy. And then She's already just doing like, it. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> put on a smile. Like, woohoo, let's go. <laughs> That's Do bananas how. come along for the ride? Um, yeah. <laughs> I am the banana queen of Taiwan. I am imported banana goods, <laughs> fresh from Taiwan. You've said that you use the color yellow a lot. So I'm wondering why you choose to use that color a lot in your drag. Um, I actually don't know. It was actually in 2020 when I just made myself a full on yellow outfit, just like yellow shoes, yellow hair, yellow clothes. And then after that, I kind of got too obsessed and then I went into this deep yellow cavern of yellowness. <laughs> and then after that, I just couldn't go back to any other color. <laughs> so I kind of just stuck with yellow. Yeah, I just like how yellow is just such a bright reminder to, you know, always try to be joyful in life and find some sort of happiness. <laughs> yeah. No, it looks good on you too. I mean, like clearly. Yeah. So I'm asking some questions to all of the uh, season 16 cast members. What can you tease about the season ahead and maybe the twists and the turns? Okay, we've already got, but I'll just take this as an answer. But how was season 16 serving? Oh, she's gonna rise again. <laughs> what? Ah! Uh! Very that. It's crazy, it's such a crazy ride. Like, you know, a lot of times you see the franchise and you're like, oh, I could do that, I could do that. Like, that's totally easy. And then you actually go and do it, it's like, wow, <laughs> maybe I spoke too soon. <laughs> it's actually really hard. Yeah. Like, it's really stressful, but also it's very fun. And it's kind of like competitive and you're like, <sighs> yeah, the season is mad <laughs> Everyone's like <laughs> tough and um, it's brutal. And the twists, twists are twisting. The twists are twisting up and down like a tornado swinging you around and you just have no idea where you're at and then you're trying to find some sort of path to not getting eliminated and you're just like, where am I? I'm like, I'm still here. Okay, good, let's go. It's like rolling, rolling. It's, like, <laughs> it's, it's a race. It's, it's, it's like a race, but your hands are on like the controlling wheel and just like, 
Well, you just won the acting challenge, I think, right now, just by doing that. So you already have your first challenge. I mean, I'm not the most vocal person, so I thought it would be better to act it out for the viewers to really feel it. I love it. No, I felt it. I definitely felt it. Um, The last thing I'll ask you is, in terms of, like, untouched and just general drama of the season, Mm -hmm. we know we love that as well. Who do you think deserves to get the Mistress Isabel Brooks drag delusion vaccine the most of your sisters this season? Um, I think a lot of the Queen's seasons is equally delusional <laughs> they're all very delusional and in their own little world maybe not all of them like at least half the cast so you get the vaccine yeah okay. they, they really need it okay well we'll see how that all plays out i can't wait to see what you <laughs> we're still doing it we're still going we're still, oh my gosh yes. I'm twitching. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really can't wait to see what you do on the show i am very excited because you do have like i mean like i said doing the research on you. It's just, you need to go check out her stuff because it is, oh. it's incredible. Thank you so much for doing Thank this interview. I, it really was lovely and stay tuned for more with the cast of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16.